and spending the time. Cool. So I recently built two mechanical keyboards. So I just wanted to share what I've learned during the process about what goes into that and how easy or difficult it is and the choices and things to be aware of. So this is about building custom mechanical keyboards, not just buying it pre-built off the shelf. And when it comes to something like that, you can choose exactly how much DIY you want to do. You can buy the parts and assemble them, or you could 3D print the parts or CNC the parts or somehow make your own parts. And one of the advantages is that you can kind of go crazy with exactly what layouts and designs you like. And also, you can program them most of the time, so you can customize what happens when you press the keys as well. So if you want to build your own custom mechanical keyboard, I think the first place to start is what size you want it to be, what layout you want it to be, basically what it should look like. You can go from anything that's really small to really big. You could have a standard size keyboard. This is with a number pad and arrow keys and pretty standard layout. Or you could have something that has a holder for your phone. Or you could have something that your cat can be happy with. You could have something that's really small and portable. Or you could have something that's really big and really unportable. You can have something that you can take when you travel. Or you can have something that has a different layout. In this case, this is a grid-based ortholinear layout. You could have something ergonomic, maybe you want to experiment with something that's more comfortable, avoids RSI. Once you've decided, in general, what you want your keyboard to be, um, you have to buy a few parts. So I'll show you the parts here, and then we'll talk about each of the main parts. So one is the case. This is the housing inside which everything else goes. The main part, sort of the heart of the keyboard, is the PCB. This is what you attach the switches to. On top of the PCB, uh, most good quality keyboards will have a plate for stability. So the switches go into this and then go into the PCB. Then finally, you have the switches. These are the mechanical part of the mechanical keyboard. They're actually really simple. It's just like a push button switch. You can actually use it as a push button switch on other things if you want. And then there are the keycaps that go on the switches and give the look and feel to your keyboard. So we'll start with the PCB. Um, the PCB kind of is the heart of the keyboard. It influences the layout, uh, the customizabili customizability, uh, whether you can program it. And the main features, it can be like, is it a split keyboard? Is it a standard keyboard? Um, does it have LEDs? Some PCBs come built in with LEDs. Does it support extra LEDs? So many PCBs support adding LEDs for each key. Does it support programming? So this is an example of a PCB with LEDs added on. Or you can forego the entire PCB and hand wire all the switches to each other. If you do that, you do need to buy a small microcontroller, which is the USB interface and manages um, all the key presses. This is like the more DIY option. Um, the plate is pretty standard. Uh, once you've decided your PCB, just get the plate that goes along with it. Most PCBs come with the plate like as a package. Not much to decide there. Um, switches is the other big decision. Um, there's a ton of varieties and options and feels. And it's very subjective. There's no wrong answer. It's just what feels good to you. Um, so basically, the two main types are the linear switches and the tactile switches. The difference is that in the tactile switches, when you press them down, you feel a little bit of a bump. And in the tactile switches, there are two main categories. There are the clicky ones and the quiet ones. The clicky ones are the noisy ones that make the clicking sound. The quiet ones have the bump, but they don't make that sound. And then across both the categories, um, there is the weight of the switch, so how much pressure you need to uh, put to activate the switch. And then most switches have this plus style, uh, cherry style stem, but some don't. So when you're buying keycaps, that's something to keep in mind. These are low profile switches, so almost like laptop switches. Stabilizers are for your big keys on the keyboard to basically stabilize them. So for your space bar, your big shift, enter, backspace, stuff like that. And then keycaps, another big decision. You can go like completely standard or completely artisan. Um, you could get a color scheme. You could get something that matches your shoes. You could get something that is a theme, a Pokemon theme in this case. Or you could just mix and match everything. Typewriter style, blank, 
I'm Artisan again, or just a novelty keycap, and I'm out of time. So that is it for the talk, but on to the questions. Uh, not a lot, actually. Uh, most of what I got, I bought from Taobao. Uh, got it shipped. It's really cheap. If you're not comfortable with the Chinese aspect of Taobao, get it from AliExpress. It's the same sellers, but they write in English and they talk to you in English for some reason. Uh, for a few dollars more, I should add. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. Uh, can you show us the keyboards that you made? Yeah. I didn't bring the one I made. Uh, sadly, I had gone to work and I didn't bring it. So this is so this is actually a nice keyboard in the sense that you don't have to do any soldering to get it all set up. You can just plug the the switches into the plate, and then you can just plug in the plate onto the PCB. Which one is this? This is called the XD75. Let me just reverse that. So the the switches kind of just plug in to the PCB directly, and then they just work out of the box. For most, uh, most of the PCBs, you do need to solder the switches. But I did some soldering for the first time for this keyboard, for another keyboard, and it's, it was much easier than I thought it would be. So this just plugs in. It has LEDs at the back. It's an ortholinear layout, so like a grid-based layout. And then that's the case. Yes? Okay, um, for, for the list for laptops? What do you mean? Can I like change the keys on my laptop to something more mm, custom? No. <laughs> Is nobody, why, 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 why now? <laughs> so, one of the reasons behind the customizability is the mechanical keyboards and the individual parts they're made of. The laptop keyboards, especially the Apple ones, yeah. they're kind of very um, specific and very designed to just work like break. that. Yeah, and break if you try to do anything. Like yeah. Yes. The plate, um, it depends. So usually based on the PCB, the plate will be constructed like that. Like this plate is for this PCB and that's why it's a grid-based layout. For other PCBs, which are, which have, a, like some PCBs have the option you can, then it depends what plate you get and does it fit that layout. For the button, you have to buy the one that fits the plate. Yeah. What's the profile you get? So yeah, these are the different profiles, basically different heights and whether they're curved or straight and so on. I have recently been using the DSA profile, the top one, and I really like those. It's a kind of flat profile, but concave keycaps, so that feels really nice on your fingers. Yes, at the back. Your opinion on the laser keyboards? The laser? Razor. Laser keyboards. Oh, you mean the one where it's just projecting onto yeah, no, I mean, no, that's not a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are no keys, right? Yeah, there are no keys, you're just basically hitting your table. Yes? Has anyone made like an emoji keyboard? I think maybe. I had a picture somewhere, but no, not here. Yeah. Uh, but I think you can, you can print your own keycaps, so. Yeah, emoji keycaps there. Yeah, yeah, you can totally do that. <laughs> How do you program the PCB? So for programming, um, there's a popular firmware called QMK. Uh, most of the custom keyboards have a microcontroller that supports that firmware. So you can use this. It uses kind of this C, but very easy to read and program in style of programming. Now they even have a GUI, a web-based GUI. There was another question I think you had, was it? Me? Yeah, no, okay. Cool, thank you.